Hi friends. It's late at night, but I thought I would live stream for a while. My husband isn't feeling well and I'm kind of afraid to sleep in my bed. I really do not need a stomach virus right now. And uh, my daughter fell asleep on the couch. Um, I don't want to leave her down here by herself and because of my elbow I can't carry her up. So um, I might just sleep down here. I see one person. Who is it? I went to the, the specialist today and my elbow is still fractured but I don't have to wear the sling anymore and I still can't bear any weight for at least another three weeks. Then I asked him about my wrist pain. Oh hi Terry. <laughs> I asked him about my wrist pain and he asked if the pain was radiating from my elbow and I said no and so he squeezed it and stuff and I said my wrist actually hurts and so he said I actually probably sprained my wrist which makes sense because my arm whipped the ground so um yeah I'm not really sure like what I really should be doing like I'm scared to work really hard to take the lids off things because it feels like I'm gonna break something but it might just be the the uh, sprained wrist. Hi Tanya, how are you? Uh, Terry, I can do things like maybe open the fridge door with that arm but no, like if I'm trying to like get up off the bed or something like that I'm not supposed to like push off um, or lift my daughter. So that's still going to be a frustration is that I can't put her into a, a grocery cart. Um, but it's getting easier to put her shoes on. So for a while, I really, it took me like 10 minutes to get her shoes on. <laughs> Hi, May. And then uh, she got some stickers at the doctor. And, um, later they got put on me. So do you see my stickers? I went to the store forgetting that I had these stickers on my shirt. <laughs> Terry, I don't think I'm going to do any physical therapy. Um, I know what stretches to do and I had physical therapy a long time ago when I had issues doing data entry. So I'll probably get some putty or something like that or maybe even like need some, some bread dough to start to strengthen things. Right now, if I try playing the piano, it feels like I'm getting hit in the funny bone. So that's not a good feeling. How are you all doing? I have a lot of things bothering me right now, and I feel like if I make a to-do list, just looking at the list is going to overwhelm me, even. Oh, May, you hear a ding when I make a video? Hi, Rodolfo. How are you? Hey, Tanya. Which IRS scammer girl video was it? <laughs> I have quite a few of those. <laughs> I'm glad you liked my video, Tanya. <laughs> Was it the one that's like 10 minutes long? Where I asked where I went wrong on my tax return, or was it the one where I pretend to cry and throw up, or was it the one where I pretend I am a guy who's a conspiracy theorist, 
Or is it the one where I pretend I'm a snotty girl who throws my dad under the bus and says that he should go to jail if he did my taxes wrong? Or is it the one where I pretend to be an old lady? Well, I have several where I pretend to be an old lady. Or is it the one where I'm British? Okay, Tanya, yeah. <laughs> that one was planned. Like She was supposed to come in and say, Mommy, why are you crying? And then she was trying to take more artistic liberty and was going to kind of distract me from my goal, which was, can I convince the scammer that I really am crying and throwing up? <laughs> I had this one scammer right before that tell me if the person seems really distressed then I don't follow through with the scam so I thought okay with the next scammer I'm gonna see what happens if I let my toddler make a bunch of racket like usual at the time she was like crying about everything <laughs> so my son was taking care of her in the background she was all ticked off because he caught her coloring in books and not coloring books but the books on our shelf that people like to read and so he caught her and took the pens away and she was screaming about that and and if she didn't get her way she would usually come running over to me and <laughs> So I thought, what's the most distressed a person could sound like? And I thought crying and throwing up might be pretty good. Or hearing the daughter saying, why are you crying, mommy? And toddler crying in the background as usual. And uh, no, that didn't make him change his mind. I very much enjoyed wasting like an hour of his time. I'm missing some comments. Oh, Terry, you were watching an Adam scammer video? <laughs> I think Adam's okay with you watching my videos because we've collaborated together. <laughs> That's okay, May. Um, my uh, romance scammer videos, and I don't know if it's obvious that they're scammer videos because I've been putting up every Friday... Um, new episode of my four star general and so the title doesn't say anything about it being a scammer but um, people say do another scammer video well it's not scammer phone calls but they are scammer videos I tried calling scammers yesterday and no one was answering I felt sad Yeah, Tanya, that is, uh, that's the part I don't get is I can see why people would fall for some aspects of the scam, but once it gets to actually buying iTunes gift cards, that's just too far-fetched. Hi, Lewis. It is 11.53. I'm afraid to go to bed because my husband's feeling sick and I really don't want to get sick right now. I have too much to do. Thanks, Terry. See, Adam is in Spain, and we have like a, I think an eight-hour difference, and it's really hard to coordinate schedules, and the scammers wouldn't answer for Skype calls anymore, and then um, he uses Fire RTC, and I don't think we can do calls the same way on that as we can with Skype, so... Um, usually when he's on, like, live streaming and stuff, I'm teaching piano students at the moment. Hi, Dark Wolf. How are you doing? Tanya says, I watched one last night, Billy Bob, Joe Bob, IRS Scammer. Yeah, that's with, uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. <laughs> Too tired, I think. 
Okay, good night, May. I could fall asleep easy if I went to bed, but... I don't know if my husband ate something bad or if he has a virus, but there have been people in our area who have a stomach thing right now. <laughs> Dark Wolf, where do you live again? Lewis, my uh, elbow is, it's getting better, but I, the doctor realized today that my wrist is also sprained when I told him my wrist still hurts and realized it wasn't anything having to do with my elbow. It was a separate thing when my arm whipped the ground. They didn't actually x-ray my wrist, and he said it felt stable, though, so he didn't feel like he should x-ray it. Oh, it's 7.30 in the UK. Are you heading to work soon? Cool. What kind of work do you do, Dark Wolf? Terry, I uh, was a night owl then, too before the hurt arm. Nighttime is usually when I can get some things done because um, my daughter doesn't nap for the most part. There she is right there. Hi cobweb. Cobweb, I saw that video you linked uh, today. That was you, right? The one from Onage, is it Onage Pranks? That was crazy. So um, she showed me this video where the guy's videos were demonetized just when he changed the thumbnail. So it wouldn't accept one thumbnail and he would change the thumbnail and then it would be monetized. So if he used one of the default thumbnails, then it was fine. Um, yeah, some of my videos I will sit there and go, hmm, hi James. I will wonder, okay, is there something objectionable in this? And I just don't get it. I mean, the one I did with my friend yesterday, we definitely said some things, well, some some words that would flag the video, and I don't know if I'm even going to click review on it, and usually my live streams are demonetized at first, and then a while later, they're suddenly monetized, even though I don't click asking for a review. I don't know. The interesting thing is... Um, Lots of times when the videos are demonetized, you still get revenue from YouTube Red. So it's not that YouTube feels like people's videos are not worthy. It's really the advertisers who are um, threatening to pull their ads because they don't want their advertisements on certain videos. So someone told me when they watched one of my videos the other day um there was an ad for um well i maybe i shouldn't say this word maybe it will demonetize my video but um it was an ad for the wacky tobacco if you know what i mean and i, I said well if i made a video about the wacky tobacco it would be de demonetized right <laughs> it would be not family friendly it would be controversial they don't want uh, anything with profanity, anything with innuendo, or um, anything controversial. So what counts as controversial? That's kind of an interesting subject. Is it controversial to talk about whether your belly button is an innie or an outie? Ooh. I should do a prank on the scammers. What kind of prank should I do on the scammers?
I think the problem, so people say that YouTube is trying to kill the small channels, and I think what it comes down to is they have this flagging system, and for a lot of the videos, it should not have been flagged, and so a real person then has to watch it, and they don't have enough real people to watch all of the videos that are being flagged, and so we're low on the priority list because obviously since YouTube makes revenue off of people's videos, they're going to first have a real person watch the videos for the channels that are getting thousands and thousands of views. And then if a small YouTubers are lucky and if we get a thousand views in seven days, that's, that's the rule. They won't review, review it until, that video has a thousand views in a seven day period. It's not, hey, when it reaches a thousand views, we'll review it. It specifically says a thousand views in seven days. Then someone will watch it, a human. And then who knows if that human is normal or not. Thanks, Tanya. I like pranking scammers. I have so many scammer ideas, but um, so few opportunities to actually talk to them lately. <laughs> Cowboy, they could hire you to watch them? That's a good idea. So really, if more people had YouTube bread, that would probably help um, small channels more than anything, I think. I don't know. And I've been toying with the idea of starting a Patreon, and I'm really not that familiar with it. I've never um, been a patron to anyone, but I thought it would be funny to be on there and have a series of um, like videos that only my patrons can see that is stuff that's like all controversial. <laughs> I could title them all demonetized by the word fill in the blank. <laughs> demonetized by the word smurf. Ooh, Tanya, you should get that free cruise. James says, I had one of my videos taken down with 10 views for copyright when there was no reason as there was no music or anything. That is bizarre. Was it um, an image you used for your thumbnail, maybe? What would be nice is if they told you the reason that your video was being flagged. Um, one thing that I've noticed is if uh, I talk about D-E-A-T-H, like when my grandma passed away, that was demonetized. But that was back when I, I could click review and then a real person would watch it. And it was sometime after that when they realized, we can't keep this up. We can't watch every single person's video. I feel like I should make like a two hour long video. And um, in hopes that it will be demonetized and then eventually it will get that thousand view threshold and then a real human will be forced to watch all two hours of my video. <laughs> I don't really want to edit a two hour video though. My, my friend and I talked for like 24 minutes I think the other day and it took forever just to get it down to like 20 minutes, a lot of editing and trying to figure out how you edit out certain words. Like she kept using like our full names and uh, the name of our school. <laughs> so I'm using a new editing program and I was trying to figure out not only how to edit out the sound, but add a beeping noise. And there are a lot of sounds that come with it, but None of, the, none of them was that typical, you know, cover up the profanity beeping noise. 
And so I just started goofing off and recording myself going, beep. <laughs> that was more for Jen to have a good laugh. I mean, I, I could just not use a beeping noise. <laughs> uh, thanks, to, uh, James. So the only way that YouTube has to donate right now is during live streams and they call that a super chat but i think that's kind of lame because then people can't donate anonymously if they want to um and then if i made a gofundme the only or not a gofundme but um paypal if i use paypal i either have to use my real name or i have to i have to make a business paypal so that i would have to officially start a business and um, I don't know I'm not sure I have the brain cells to deal with that right now <laughs> but with um, patreon people can pay you like a dollar a month and then you can give them certain perks like rewards and stuff you can put up videos that only your patrons can watch like um my friend Jennifer Thomas, who makes beautiful music videos and stuff, she will put up like behind the scenes footage just for her patrons to see. Some people will send t-shirts and that sort of thing. I've toyed with the idea of doing mer merchandise, so I've been watching videos um, on ways to make money through YouTube and they say the real money is in merchandise, but I'm not really sure like, if I were to do t-shirts or anything like that, like, what phrases would I put on it, or... I don't know. Like a rainbow mug? It's not very original. Like, there aren't any, any you know, rainbow mugs in the world. <laughs> Okay, James says, it was all right as I complained about the vid and they allowed it to come back. Oh, so they reinstated your your video. Cobweb t-shirts would be fun. I'm not sure the best way to implement that. Like, where I would sell it through, I guess. I do have some friends who at times have like made t-shirts for a living so um, I think one of them doesn't do that anymore. Um, there was one thing I thought about selling today but I don't want to ruin the surprise. It's really hard for me to um, wait and post the general videos just once a week because like, well, it's still kind of ongoing, but I have pretty much, I have the videos like done. I'm just waiting to release them. James, I need mug merch. I have used mugs in some of my videos, like I have the I Heart Gym mug. Um, there's an I Love You mug that I have. Um, I don't think I've used my Late Show mug in a video. But I love my Late Show mug. I used to really love Dave Letterman. And my sister got to go to New York and go to his show. And what I really wanted was a souvenir from Rupert G's Hello Deli, but they don't actually like sell any actual souvenirs there. And, like, why not? Like, he can make so much money. I mean, he was featured on the show often, and so she bought me this package of M&Ms from his deli, but you can't tell it's from his deli. It just looks like a normal package of M&Ms, and I put it away in a cupboard somewhere, and sometimes people would find the M&Ms. I'm like, no, this is my special M&Ms. Rupert was my hero. Like Dave would talk in his ear 
And he would say everything with a straight face. Um, well, that was just kind of his usual personality. And one time, my brother-in-law was visiting, and I was down in Tequila by Ikea. We were driving up the hill, and Rupert must have been visiting the area. I was mid-sentence talking to my, my brother-in-law, and I looked over at the car next to me, and I started, like, screaming hysterically, Oh my gosh, it's Rupert! It's Rupert! And I, I felt like I was going to crash the car. I've seen other celebrities before, but I, I didn't feel like I was going to crash the car. <laughs> so there was this one <laughs> where Dave told him to go buy tickets to a, a certain movie that some people, well, a lot of people would be offended by. And he made him buy a whole bit, bunch of different sets of the tickets until this girl was looking at him totally disgusted. I was just really impressed that, you know, he would do pretty much any embarrassing thing that he told him to. <laughs> oh, and then my, one of my other favorite things on Dave Letterman was when he got to work in the Taco Bell in the drive-thru. Did you guys ever see that? You can probably find it on YouTube. And so, um... Some people were really nice, but one lady got really mad and said, uh, you know, don't smurf with me. And she drove up over the curb and left. Oh, James, you want me to have chocolate merchandise? That's a good idea. See, cobweb, no, I can't release the videos now. No, I can't. <laughs> See, but if I had a Patreon, I could do a thing where my patrons can watch some of my videos early if I, if I have some that I'm putting out a little bit at a time. <laughs> that could be a perk. So you come up with, like, different reward levels, and I actually started making one, and... I was just kind of running out of ideas, and then I thought, if I do this perk, will I really be able to follow through with that, and will I be able to stay on top of things? I don't want to make unrealistic expectations of myself. <laughs> I have a lot of things to deal with between my kids and teaching piano lessons, and my music planning stuff at church and my busy season is coming up where I'm going to start planning music like crazy because we'll have our big huge Christmas celebration it's like a three day long thing with um, three days of uh, music sets so it's a great experience but um it gets really stressful when you're in charge of everything because there's lots of sickness in December too and you just kind of want everyone to get away from you. Like, during Christmas I would like to do fun, festive things with people, but at the same time I feel like, get away from me, germy people. <laughs> yes, Cobweb, I am very busy. And I get a lot of messages saying, make more scammer videos, make more scammer videos. And it can take like over half an hour just to get them on the phone. And then at that point, you're trying to keep them on the phone another half hour. And with my non-napper, um, that just isn't possible sometimes. And my friend's daughters come over at like 6.30, 6.45 in the morning and... I don't really, well, if I call the scammers that early, they kind of, they're less likely to believe I'm for real. And it seems like they don't ever answer, well, the IRS scammers don't answer for me 
after like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So once my piano students are gone and stuff, well, then I have like kids who I have to make them do their homework and kids need a ride places and making dinner and all that stuff. So <coughs> it was easier when uh, she was taking naps. Do you guys like coconut water with pineapple? I bought Wonder Woman tonight. It was an impulse purchase and I'm resisting the urge to watch it. James, it does snow, but not that often. Sometimes it snows enough to make me want it to go away. It doesn't really take that long for me to want it to go away though because I, I hate driving in it. It's so hilly here and usually when we have snow it's just barely at freezing level and so the roads are super slippery. And last year we had a bunch of ice like it was sleeting and stuff and I was planning Messiah and we had to go pick up the timpani with someone's borrowed trailer. And so we have timpani borrowed from the high school in the trailer. And the trailer is going like this in the back. And I'm like having a panic attack in the car. <laughs> or my husband's truck. I, seriously, I was on the verge of hyperventil hyperventilating. <laughs> and I am not in charge of Messiah this year. And I will not be in charge of it next year. But the year after that, it will be my turn. And I'm already dreading it. I don't even want to deal with it. <laughs> but next time I will have six months to plan. Because when I was uh, called to this position, I had three months to plan that. And the big, huge Christmas thing. And people said, delegate, delegate. And... I said, I'm still finding out what needs to be done. I was finding things out little by little, uh, such as we feed the orchestra for both rehearsals for Messiah. And so then I had to get, or try to get volunteers to plan meals. And I, I did get someone to do one of them, but I didn't have any takers for the other. And there was some overlap with the big, huge Christmas thing that we were doing. And we didn't have enough volunteers for that big, huge event. And so I ended up heading up the dress rehearsal lunch and it was icy that day. And one of my friends like baked all of the breakfast casseroles and it was the best breakfast casserole recipe ever. And so that, that turned out good and they, were very appreciative and felt like, wow, you don't have to make us lunch. And, but that's just the, the tradition. And we alternate with a, two other um, towns. And so I feel like I can't be the one to break the time honored tradition of making lunch for them. <laughs> but I had so much to do and I was also soloing for it. And that was the first time I ever soloed for Messiah. And, uh, and then someone said, oh, we usually do the dress rehearsal on Christmas China. And I had to poo poo that. I said, no, there's no way on top of everything else that I am going to have to borrow a bunch of China sets from people when they already have so much to do. So mm -mm. that tradition can be done away with. They don't care if it's on China or not. Oh, it was so stressful. And, oh, and then I found out you're supposed to give small gifts to the orchestra. So then there was the whole finding something that was cost effective. And then I couldn't believe how much I spent on like ribbon for the, the packages. It just like really added up. <laughs> so maybe by the time it's our turn again, I won't have that position anymore. <laughs>
Terry, you like coconut but not the water? It's kind of an acquired taste for me. James, you're drinking coconut water too? We are coconut water buddies. Cabo, that's a good idea to hire an artist. James, does it snow where you are? Cobweb, I'll tell you what I ended up getting for the symphony. I got symphony bars. I actually found them on sale, so um, I think they were less than a dollar each. But yeah, it adds up once you decide to wrap some ribbon around it and stuff. And then I had some friend, oh, I had a friend who had a bunch of leftover Christmas ornaments that she made and we attached those to it too. Some little nativity ornaments. Thanks, Terry. They really liked the symphony bars and just being appreciated. <clears throat> and you know most of those people they they can make a lot of money playing elsewhere and so it's really cool that they come and play messiah for free just because they love it so much so i had vowed that the next year i was going to audition for it but i had no idea at the time that i would end up being in charge of it <laughs> James, it doesn't usually snow in England. Maybe I'll move there. <laughs> okay, Cobweb, if I start making chocolate, I will send you some. I was never good at selling things. Like My mom didn't even like me selling like Girl Scout cookies door to door. But those things should really just, you know, sell themselves. They're so good. So Sabrina's at an age where she still makes people smile wherever she goes. It's so cute. What time is it now? I can't see the clock on my tablet when I'm live streaming. But it's been 38 minutes. I should probably try to go to sleep. Thanks, Cobweb. Terry, it's 1220. The night's still young. I do have some things to do, but a lot of that stuff is still one-handed. <laughs> it's getting old. I sort of feel like maybe I could try putting socks on again. I can get them on Sabrina's feet now, but it doesn't feel very good. James, you have a cathedral called the Monster? That sounds so cool. England is definitely on my list of places to visit. Although I don't think I could drive. I think that would really mess me up. <laughs> oh, the Minister. <laughs> it's called the Minister. Like, I've never heard of a cathedral called the Monster. <laughs> You guys should make one called the monster. I was going to tell you um, the name of a park in Idaho, but it, it would probably get my video demonetized. <laughs> Uh, 
Maybe I'll link to it after this post. <laughs> oh, it's the Minster. Okay, gotcha. Terry, you spent a week in London in 1978. That's cool. See, when I went to Austria when I was 15, um, I got to spend just a few days in Germany and a few days in Italy too. And I remember it being dark and driving through some other country. I don't remember. But I was in this Mercedes that had leather seats and um, no seat belts in back. And we would get on the Autobahn and we would stop for dinner somewhere. And my host dad would have like three or four beers and start driving again. And I was kind of terrified. Uh, when I was in Germany, it was just in Munich for... Or oh, München. <laughs> yeah, for, um, yeah, just a few days. I don't re really remember that much about uh, Germany. But I was amazed by the amount of castles and stuff. It was like my host family could not run out of castles to take me to. And I wish I had kind of documented things better, but um, one of my favorite things that I saw in Austria was this water garden and you go on a tour and every spot that you stop at some water squirts out from somewhere and, and sprays people. That was funny. So I would like to go to Europe with my husband. That's kind of one of my big dreams. Is that we could go together because he lived there um, in Germany when his dad was in the Air Force and uh, I took four years of German and so um, he knows how to get around on the bus system and so I, I think the the two of us together would have a fun time navigating around the country. I would still really like to go to Switzerland. And, oh man, I saw the most stunning photos of um, a place in Greece recently. And I could not believe the color of the water. Big Ben stopped chiming? Terry, you lived in Germany for a year, or just, or just that town? When I first got to Austria, um, they weren't on their summer break yet. And um, so I went to school with... Um, and it wasn't an official exchange I was doing, so I went there for five weeks, and I went to school with a girl for a while, but I wasn't like doing school work. I was just tagging along. And um, I was starting to understand things little by little because at that point I'd only had a year of German and I understood that the teacher was telling this kid, Marcus, uh, to stop flirting with Sarah. And I remember my eyes got big like, did he just say what I think he did? And then Marcus turns, turns around and goes, do you know what flirt means? <laughs> What are the best things to do in England? And then I brought peanut butter with me to Austria and this kid named uh, Dieter, well actually he went by Tretti. He goes, it tastes like sugar cream. But then I was introduced to Nutella over there and I thought, well, no wonder why you guys don't like peanut butter. Like we can compete with chocolate. 
if I were raised on Nutella, I don't think I would switch to peanut butter. <laughs> Unless it was covered in chocolate. Oh, if you guys have Buckeyes, those things are the devil. So you mix together, and they're actually gluten-free too. But just make sure, like, if you have major gluten problems, make sure the peanut butter has not had a knife dipped into it for bread or anything. Who's going to bed? Oh, are you going to work? Bye, James. Anyway, you mix together, let's see, butter, peanut butter, uh, powdered sugar, and vanilla. And then you roll those into balls and then you freeze them with some toothpicks in them for like 30 minutes. And then you dip them in melted chocolate and then they look like Buckeyes. And it's kind of like eating Reese's peanut butter cups, but better. And um, there's less self-control involved. So I would just suggest that you not make them. Okay, Terry, try them once. My friend first made them for me. And they're pretty much irresistible. <laughs> Bye, James. Have a good day at work. Cobweb, you call them peanut butter bars? Even if they're round? Oh, peanut butter balls, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, so I like to make those for my friends who have like celiac. Then they could eat something super yummy without worrying about the gluten. So I want to tell you guys what's going on with the general. I hadn't heard from him in a while and today I suddenly got a message and things turned interesting and but I can't give it away. So hard for me to wait. Like when it's Christmas, the hardest thing for me is waiting for other people to open the presents I got them rather than waiting to open my presents. <laughs> no cobweb, I can't tell. You know when people do movie trailers and you can't wait to see the movie and then you realize they gave away all the funniest things in the trailer? I don't want to do that. Terry, I am a tease. You're right. But you will find out more about the general on Friday, but it's not the stuff that happened today. So you won't hear about what happened today for weeks. Okay, I have to shift, which is hard because I can't push on my elbow. All right, here we go. I'm going to switch hands. <laughs> I tripped on something the other day and it was pretty terrifying because I started to catch myself with my hurt arm but luckily it was okay oh thanks Terry <laughs> most people say I have a mischievous smile <laughs> Yes, Terry, I do have a mischievous smile. I think I talked about this before, but I got up to say something in church one time, and my friend says later, you smile as if you know something we don't know. I said, maybe I do. <laughs> okay, so... um. 
there's been a bunch of construction at the hospital where I've been seeing the specialist. And so they had free valet parking because of the inconvenience. And I realized today, maybe I should have tipped them. I don't know. I, I should have asked if they were allowed to take tips or... I feel bad. When I go there again, I could double tip them, right? And say, sorry, I forgot to tip last time. The parking spaces are really tight and it's kind of hard to do that with my arm. I don't like to um, have to adjust a lot when I park because it hurts my arm. Okay, I'll only double tip if it's the same person. <laughs> Yeah, so what happens is I go to choir on Thursday nights and then I get home about 10.30 or 11 and then I stay up like waiting to post the next episode of The General. But it definitely doesn't get as many views as just my regular scam calls. And my scam calls too... Those don't require much editing, like some of the other videos I do. I have to edit quite a bit, and then I decide to add music or something, and that takes even more editing. Or sometimes I'll forget to say something I wanted to say, and then now I have to add some text to explain what I wanted to say, and it just it turns into a very long process. And earlier this week, I made a giant slideshow for my son, and that it took so long because I was using audio from some videos of him singing, and then I was trying to figure out how to use just the audio while they were um, while there was a photo a slideshow on top of it. So um, over time, I should become faster at using this editing program. And um, my son, Eric, is learning how to use the Adobe editing program. And it's like, your editing program's lame, blah, 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 blah. Well, the one I bought doesn't cost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> and it does what I need it to do for now. And with the way YouTube's been acting, I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on an editing program just to have them demonetize everything, right? Terry, I think the general videos, I, maybe it's just not obvious that they're scammer videos. I don't know. Like my, um, my Ashwin videos never got as many views, um, as just my regular phone call videos. And then some of my non-scammer videos, like there's a couple of those where people say, this should go viral, but they still have you know, less than a thousand views. My favorite one is still, um, when I was, I was just doing a joke video about my beauty regimen and then my daughter ended up pranking me unexpectedly. <laughs> Cobweb, add scammer to the title. Yeah, I mean, me and my four star general, like quotation, no, parentheses, the scammer. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I actually kind of want to make it into a book. People can flip through our delightful conversation anytime they want to.
But you guys aren't going to believe the stuff he says later, like into the, the last episode. <laughs> Me and my four-star scammer general. Yeah, well, I already have, um, I don't know. I can't change my title pages at this time, but I, I guess I could just change the, the title to the video itself. I don't know. I just keep hoping if I do like keywords and all that stuff to say like romance scammer and I don't know if there are other keywords that would be useful as far as people searching for that sort of thing. But it seems like most people like the IRS scammer videos more than anything. Like they like those even more than like the the tech support videos or the back brace scammer videos. So Cobweb, the problem with making it into a book is that um, you know, I confronted him with pictures of the the real general from his Facebook page, so I'm sure I couldn't put those those images in there without a copyright problem and plus um we haven't gotten to that yet, but I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> has to do with my Princess Buttercup identity. <laughs> okay, good night, Cobweb. Oh, Nipote, hi. He just got here. Okay, Nipote, I was just, um, talking about how I would go about making a book out of, like, uh, the general story. Um, also the thing with, um, my scammer soap opera, but it could be a problem because of the images that I've used in the process, and, but those are part of the fun. I mean, I would miss some of the, the best things if I didn't use those images, but I don't think I could get permission from... Isn't Disney the owner of Princess Bride now? I don't imagine they would say, go ahead and use photos from the Princess Bride from for your book. Um, General Mark Welsh might say, go ahead and use my photos in your book, maybe. Yeah, Nipote, they would never give me permission. See, when Ashwin first asked me what my name was, I just blurted out Princess Buttercup. <laughs> I wasn't thinking at the time, what if I made this into a book? I can't use pictures of Princess Buttercup. What if I did like a cartoon rendition of it? <laughs> but <laughs> still, there's... There's one part where I'm like, no, I have to show the, the thing that I made. Oh, well. <laughs> Terry, that is a shame that, yeah, I would have to get an attorney to try to get the rights. Just beg them. Could, would they find it a problem that I even use the name Princess Buttercup? Hmm. Um, Nipote, if I change the name, I don't know, it's, that's just kind of part of the fun, is showing the scammer's ignorance, because any American, a real American, 
knows Princess Bride. They know Princess Buttercup. Um, any real American should know that you're feeding them a load of crap if you tell them your name is Princess Buttercup. And I tried to start a Facebook account with that name and it wouldn't let me. Because Facebook knows it's not a real name. But scammers on the other side of the world don't know that. Terry, um... I don't, I don't know if I could use other images or not. I could maybe put in a blank space and say, this is where a funny photo would go if I had the rights to use it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what's coming next in the next episode if you get to see the image that I am so proud of. Maybe I should have told him my name was Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. <laughs> okay, we can talk more about it after you guys see the episode that I'm thinking of and how to address that. I mean, you would hope that Disney would say... For the sake of foiling scammers, we will allow you to use this image just this once. Terry, I can have my daughter draw Princess Spider Cup, but there's this one thing in particular. Drawing it won't do it justice, it just won't. <laughs> I will tell you guys, I made the general very mad today. And you will find out about that in about um, three weeks. <laughs> Terry, you're going to go back and watch my scammer soap opera? Yeah, when I got on Google+, Plus, um, other people, too, joined in the fun. And we had the the guy who was, Mowage is what brings us together today. Hey, Megan. Thanks. I'm glad you liked my soap opera. I really didn't expect it to last that long. I thought um, as soon as Fred confronted Ashwin... He would realize this was all one big game and just stop contacting me. And I still wasn't sure what to make of that. Did he enjoy the game? Did he wonder, this is entertaining, like what is she going to say next? Like how could he not know I was just messing with him the whole time? This couch is not comfortable. I'm going to have to sleep on it tonight. Let's see. Um, with my scammer soap opera... On Google Plus, we had a picture of Princess Buttercup, Wesley, <laughs> Humperdinck, um, what's his name? The Sicilian guy? The, uh, 
the grumpy lady in the crowd who says, Liar! <laughs> <laughs> that definitely would not get approved by Disney. Hey, we use like seven or so of your characters. <laughs> I would like to make it into a book just, just for myself even so I can just quickly read through it and have a laugh all over again. I don't sit here and, you know, watch hours of my videos. <laughs> And sometimes people will leave a comment that says, um, they'll tell me something they liked about the video and which minute and second it happened. And I'm like, ah, now I don't even remember what they're talking about and I have to go look. Because I've had quite a few videos now and you know, I, I don't even remember everything I said or did anymore. <laughs> Yeah, Terry, it's funny what the scammers will fall for. And when I did tell Ashwin my name is Princess Buttercup, I I thought he was going to catch on to that. I don't know, like, I didn't know if other countries are familiar with Princess Bride or not. But he was just saying, oh, that's a beautiful name. One of my favorite moments, I wish I had this on video, was when... Um, so at that point, I had stopped talking to him on the phone because I was just going to burst out laughing. And he called, and I gave the phone to my daughter, and she's babbling, and he's going, Princess? Princess? Baby? Baby, can you give the phone to your mom? And she's like one back then, so yeah, she's totally going to listen to the guy. Nipote says, do you remember years ago when an elementary school in Florida painted Disney characters on the wall? Disney told them to remove them. And then Warner Brothers said, go ahead and paint all of our characters you want. Wow, no, I didn't hear about that. Very lame, Disney. And the thing is, would Walt Disney himself feel that way, or is that what it's turned into? Terry says, when I worked at Disney, I wrote a daily drama story about my bosses and co-workers using their names spelled backwards. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> People are dang, you know, so dang so happy. A teacher painting images on a wall, are they charging for it? I mean, or does Disney feel like you should buy posters from our website and put them on your walls instead of painting the images? It's just lame. I mean, it's to make the classroom better. Nipote, you did freelance for Disney? Wait, are you saying the kids couldn't draw Disney? That's psycho. They know Disney's going to have, um, well, they're taking their shows off of Netflix, I heard, and they're going to be doing their own streaming service. But um, that makes me not want to subscribe to that. And I bet it'll probably cost more than Netflix, even. Nipote, what kind of freelance was it? Was it like voices? I 
I had heard that if you worked at Disneyland, you could get fired for not smiling. <laughs> oh, you were writing for the animated classics division. That's cool. Yeah, I don't think uh, Disney is what it used to be, maybe. I kind of wonder what else are they going to buy and ruin. They're kind of right up there with people who take issue with kids having lemonade stands, you know. Okay, Nipote's going to tell us what really makes her angry about Disney. Do share. Okay, this lady complained to Disney years ago about the poo beanie having a bee on its butt. Okay. So they went and changed it and put the embroidered bee on the leg. Oh, so she didn't like that, that his butt was involved? Like she thought that was perverted or something? <laughs> Okay, she says, meanwhile, it has always bothered me that they sell personalized clothing that is not good for kids because they can get abducted. Oh, see me with their, their names on it? Yeah, that's never wise. Yeah, that's a good point, Nipote. Okay, so years ago, when I was a teenager or a young adult, I think I was just graduating high school, I went and applied to work at the Disney store. I thought it would be a fun environment. And I was always taught that when you go for an interview, at least wear some makeup. But um, they did a group interview with... Um, two other women and they kind of made a point about that that they didn't like their employees wearing makeup and then what it boiled down to was the other two had been to Disneyland and I hadn't but by the end of the interview I thought they were so weird I didn't work, want to work for them anymore <laughs> And, oh, I don't know if I've told this before, but I had a friend who got kicked into Disneyland. So he was a teenager, and he and his friends were in the vicinity, and they saw this door, and no one was by it by the moment, so they went and opened it. Like, they had just gone to, like, McDonald's or something nearby, and they said, oh, what's behind this door? And it was like this area where people who worked there would change into their costumes and stuff. And the security guard thought they had gotten into there from the inside of the park rather than the outside of the park. And so he said, get out of here. And he kicked them into the park. <laughs> and then they went on rides. <laughs>
Nipote says, I went to the headquarter of police stations all over the country, and the avoidance of personalized clothing was on the list of what not to do. That's true, I've heard that. But Disney gets these calls all the time, and they ignore it. But they moved the bee. So when you go to Disneyland, do they put like a stamp on your hand, or... I don't know how my friend got away with going on rides, but that was, I think, in the 90s. Yeah, I don't know if I ever will go to Disneyland. <laughs> Unfortunately. Are you awake? You waking up? Nipote says Disney also fired someone at the store for breaking her arm and it was in a cast. They said the cast didn't fit their image. Wow. So Sleeping Beauty is not allowed to have a broken arm, huh? <laughs> That's messed up. You would think that would go against like the Disabilities Act or something. It sounds like they take themselves a little too seriously. <laughs> Years ago, have I talked about this before? I worked at a certain taco restaurant. And, um... They, I would get chewed out for calling the food, like, the wrong thing. So, for instance, the frozen bag said they were tater tots, but once you added... The seasoning salt and stuff, they're called Mexi fries. And so one time I asked someone for some, some tater tots to put in the, the fryer, and they go, they're Mexi fries. And um, I asked someone for a rag to wipe the tables, and they said, we don't call them rags. That might offend someone who overhears. We call them towels. And, uh, yeah, their reasoning was, um, a rag can refer to a woman's monthly time. And I said, well, a towel is like a large object that you, like, dry off with, or like a, a hand towel, and a, a rag is a small square item, which is what I'm looking for. So I didn't work there that long because they were pretty ridiculous. I'm not saying the whole company is like that, but that location, they were really weird. And this one guy wouldn't stop asking me if I liked the Beatles and he was weirding me out. And he suggested I should sing in their band. Okay, so next time I do some kind of series where I mess with a scammer bad for months, I will have to think of a scenario where I don't use any photos or anything or names from um, movies or anything, especially if Disney's involved. Ooh, you guys, I'll tell you something scandalous. It's my sister-in-law. She did an oil painting of Winnie the Pooh, and it hangs in my mother-in-law's bathroom, and it's called the Pooh Room, and I don't think Disney would like that. I mean, I cannot confirm or deny that my sister-in-law did an oil painting of Winnie the Pooh, 
Maybe it wasn't really Winnie the Pooh, but some other bear. Maybe if she put a B on its rear end, they couldn't call it Winnie the Pooh anymore. Right, Nipote? Does Disney own Star Wars? I seem to recall that they do. Speaking of, I'm so upset because somehow I missed that in Seattle there was a John Williams concert conducted by John Williams. I had some friends go to it, and the next day they said that um, Steven Spielberg made a surprise appearance, just walked out onto the stage. And this was on Jared's birthday, and he loves John Williams, and that's how he even got to love music. That was his first CD he ever owned, was a whole bunch of different uh, soundtracks of you know John Williams music, and just kicking myself that would have been the perfect thing to do for his 18th birthday and I heard they sold out like immediately but if I had had any chance I totally would have gotten that for him I'm so mad Terry says when I left Disney to go to DreamWorks one co-worker painted a pic of Mickey Mouse Sitting on a crescent moon as a going away gift. <laughs> That's so rebellious. Okay, did anyone confirm yet that Disney owns Star Wars? Please tell me I dreamed that. Hmm. Well, I will Google that later. If they do own Star Wars, they're ruiners. Okay, well, my arms are getting tired from holding my tablet. I didn't feel like putting it in the tripod thing. And I'm tired. I should probably go to bed like a normal person. Thanks for watching though. The nice thing about live streaming is that um, you don't really feel like you have to edit anything. <laughs> I could later, but um, most of my live streams get demonetized at some point, so it doesn't really make you want to go and edit it, right? <laughs> okay, good night. Thank you, I am working on feeling better. <laughs> I've been good about doing my exercises. See you guys later. You'll see uh, episode 5 of my 4 star general this Friday. And, um, okay, this Friday, what's the date this Friday? The, the 6th? Okay, so that will post the 6th, and then number 6 will post on the 13th, and I might be able to live stream late that night, but um, I was supposed to go to a singing workshop for our choir, 
usually they need someone at the piano or something. Well, if I can tolerate playing the piano a bunch at that point. But um, we have a guy who's like a pretty much a genius and he can just play anything in any key. So the um, professor who runs, runs the workshop will say, um, oh, hi, Emily. He will say, um, oh, can you, can you raise that up a step? And, and then our pianist goes, okay. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, how does he do that? It's amazing. I am just, I'm strictly just like a note reader. I don't really play by ear and, um, to transpose things in my, my brain like that. Eh. Emily, you like the way I sing your name? Emily, like that? Did I say it like that? <laughs> Emily, sadly, I was just getting ready to say goodbye because it's quite late. <laughs> Terry, it seems like people either like read notes or they play by ear. And Emily, why have you been crying? I'm not going to go to bed now if you've been crying. That makes me sad. I turn on the TV. Jimmy Kimmel's crying. Like all the people that normally don't cry. Emily, everyone does not hate you. I know that. Because you are Emily and you are great. But I'm sorry things are hard right now. Where do you live, Emily? Is it super late for you? Oh, wow, it's 4.10 a.m. for you? Well, recently, a certain child in my life felt like their friends were avoiding them. But it turned out it was really like one friend in particular. And they were having a hard time with that. But really, the friend was busy and off on vacation, and the sister was going back to college and stuff. And so the child took it pretty hard and was just, you know, struggling. And so, um, there were other friends that were interested in spending time, but this was like their best friend. And, you know, that just kind of makes them feel like, you know, everyone's avoiding me. And, um, is that kind of what, is there like one person in particular who's mad at you and you feel like everyone's mad at you or something? Are you still there, Emily? Most of your friends left you. I'm sorry. Do you mind if I ask how old you are? You're 15. That's, you know, one of those awkward ages for sure. I think a lot of kids feel awkward at that age and they're 
trying to figure out themselves. Um, it's really hard. And when I was your age, I didn't have all this social media stuff complicating things, you know. But, um, and I had um, phases where I didn't hang out with anybody. Like, my friends were just kind of starting to make choices, and um, some of them were treating me in certain ways that I didn't appreciate it, and I really just kind of stuck to myself for a long time, and I practiced the piano a lot. And when I would get mad, I would play, like, really fast songs on the, the piano um, to make myself feel better. So, um, so sorry to hear that. So your family is mistreating you because you're gay? I'm glad that you are playing guitar. I think um, music is one of the best outlets in the world. I'm so sorry they're ignoring you. I know a lot of people have made it through what you're going through. So please don't um, give up, okay? I think all you can really do is just um, treat, continue to treat people well, and eventually they'll come around. Or you'll find people in your life who will be more accepting of you. Okay, I hope you find support right now. That's a really hard age to be and a hard thing to, to go through. I'm glad you're smiling. That makes me feel good that you're smiling. You have school today? I'm assuming. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Emily. Okay, well, you're up awfully early. Do you like to get up and beautify? You're just having a hard time sleeping. I used to get up at 4.45 a.m. when I was going to school. Yes, I had to get up super early, but I would have a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep because I was constantly worried about sleeping through my alarm, which I never did. And now I, I tend to sleep through my alarm because my husband likes to set the alarm like an hour before he has to get up because he likes to see that he still has an hour to stay in bed. <laughs> I'm always saying, why don't you just set the alarm for when you have, actually have to get up and then you'll get more deep sleep. And so now I've trained myself to sleep through his alarm because I'll just wake up over and over again and go crazy. Oh, you're in early college? Well, you are smarty pants. <laughs> so you could take a nap maybe before you <laughs> before you go to school what classes are you taking yeah see terry isn't emily smart i didn't go to early college
what the chat is telling you you're sending too many messages. You're taking nursing? That is so cool. Nurses are amazing. I, I really... I don't know how they do it. But you're going to do a lot of good in the world through nursing. Okay, you got into college at age 13. You guys, Emily is like Doogie Hauser, only a nurse. So you could be a nurse first and then be a doctor by the time you're like 20 or 18. I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess you have to go to school longer than that to be a doctor. But yeah, you could be a doctor. But nurses are very important. Well, I definitely want to hear more about this, and um, I want to hear all about when you become a nurse. Okay, I really am going to go to bed. It's been like an hour and a half now. <laughs> so tired. I really want to sleep in my own bed, but now I'm stuck down here. I don't leave Sabrina downstairs alone. Okay, Emily, go take a nap. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. All five of you who are on right now. <laughs> everyone get some sleep. Good night. Stay strong, Emily.